Hello everyone, Anthony here once again with episode 7 of creating a modular blockchain from scratch. And today we have something to do that we forgot, which I forgot to mention in the previous episode. And that's, let me open up, blockchain can go. Uh, maybe smart people or maybe... Um, people that pay a lot of attention already noticed that we could run in some trouble in our blockchain internal data structure. And the reason is we have uh, a list of headers, a list of pointers to headers. And blockchain basically is a structure, is a, our logic, our blockchain logic is gonna get called from a lot of other sources. For example, let's open up server. Let me bump up the font server. So in server we have, yeah, so server will have the blockchain internal structure uh, embedded. And um, each time, for example, we need to check um, if we have a block or we need to add a new block to the blockchain or even our API. If clients want to use that for um, a block explorer or something, they're also going to fetch blocks. And it's all coming from that blockchain data structure. So in a distributed environment, this means that we need to be thread safe. And right now we aren't. We could solve this problem by... Actually, we, we could do two things. So first of all, we can add a mutex or we can add we can construct something some some mechanism with uh, channels uh, but I'm not a big fan of that because I mean especially when I see other projects a lot of a lot of a lot of people they want to avoid mutex like like flies they want to avoid it at all costs because mutex Mutex can be can be used can be overused can be used wrong and it can have a big impact on performance. But that's not always the case. So what a lot of people do in the in the Go line community is they avoid mutexes by using channels and that could be a good option, especially if you want to add a block to the blockchain. You could say, okay, blockchain, we will add a a block channel or something where we can just uh, assign blocks to. And then we can uh, act upon upon it accordingly, which is thread safe. But what if we want to have a if we want to fetch a block, for example, if we want to fetch a header, that's a problem because that you can also do that with channels, but that's just over engineering. It's nasty. And to be honest, if you construct a mechanism, it's not always faster than a simple mutex. Um, and what do you want? Do you want to have readability, or do you want to have a complexity? That's a question. And even, like I mentioned, even that complexity with channels, it, it won't solve your performance hit. Maybe, maybe it's even slower, I'm not gonna lie. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a mutex to solve this problem. Um, it's gonna be a sync mutex. And always good practice is to add your lock above the, the thing you wanna, you wanna protect. Yes, first of all, let's make sure our tests are running fine. And we are. Now we need to be careful where we're going to add it because I will give an example later on why it's important. So uh, the first thing is height. It's BC lock. Um, we're reading. Yeah. And then we're going to defer. Uh, unlock, I guess. Yeah. Oh. Like this. And now I'm deciding where I'm gonna put it because we could do add block here and don't do it here, but that's I think to be sure I'm gonna add it here to be honest. So I'm gonna say BC lock and here we can have another choice. So normally what a lot of people do, and it's correct, is using a defer statement. And a defer statement basically says, um, execute this line of code just before the function returns. And why would you do that? Uh, in One, for readability, and two, uh, 
so you won't forget it because if you forget adding a lock you're basically fucked but in this case in this case um, defer also has a little it's not too much but defer also has a little if you go very very deep into the bare metal defer will have a little bit of a performance impact not that much it really doesn't matter but if you really want to be nitpicky and want to make it as fast as possible, what you could do here is basically say uh, BC open lock and we unlock it here. And that should work all fine. Let's see. So I'm testing, uh, even I didn't add any extra tests, but it's just to make sure we don't have a, a semaphore lock. And I think we should be good. So no, 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 we have get header so in this case we could have an issue L let's let's demonstrate so I could say BC uh, lock like this and I don't think we will have an issue but let me try to break stuff so let's unlock it here Let's see what happens. I don't. I don't think it's gonna. Ha it's gonna do something, but you never know. Yeah, exactly. You see, this is exactly why mutexes are, 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 are an issue sometimes because now we are we are locked. Our system is basically stuck because they are waiting for each other and nobody is coming. You know, it's like it's like a girlfriend. So what we need to do is just move it here, right? Oh, like this and say defer because bc pent height is calling a mutex and then we have this thing and it's just interfering with each other and we don't want that so we put it here because we're gonna grab the header from our list so let's test again test. <clears throat> and it's all working fine okay cool so i think we are good i think we are thread safe it's uh, this will not be a definite solution i think we could basically engineer it a little bit better, a little bit faster, but that is not for today. Cool. So this is solved. Uh, that's basically what I forgot to mention in the previous episode, and uh, but that's fixed not now. All right. So we can go back to the main task of this episode, and that is, let's go back to server. Uh, having a way to maintain a list of transactions because we are getting step closer to actually construct a block and have a, basically have a blockchain running but first of all we need to do a little adjustment on the server and I'm gonna explain why so our server so recap so this project is the, the goal of this project is to make a set of modules where people can construct their own prediction ready blockchain where they can adapt and change and, and add plugins and adapters whatever you want to call it to make it their own depending on their own use case we we are also going to make our own blockchain based on the modules we create uh, our chain is going to be more crypto related where we will have a virtual machine and we're going to have coins and NFTs and we're going to do all that good stuff. Um, but I want to include a server object in the project that can act as a default server that can act as an example on how to use it. And that's exactly what we're doing right here. And our server and our, basically any other server will have or note, whatever you want to call it. I think from a programming perspective, a server makes more sense. Our node, our server, ha can basically do two things. So first, we will have servers, nodes, that basically act as just um, a node that's in the network that can, where you can basically use as a block explorer. You can use it for a wallet. You can uh, just use it to strengthen the network, to add more nodes into it, so it's, it's more resilient. And we also can have a server that is a validator. And 
validators are basically participating in our consensus, which we are also going to write um, in next episodes, in future episodes. So a validator node participates in consensus, which can be elected and which can actually construct blocks and propose them into the network. Of course, we're going to add some kind of a proof of stake and we're going to do proof of work. That's old school. I'm going to do some kind of a proof of stake. Um, and we should also implement it in future episodes. But for now, we're going to say that in our server options, we could say something like a private key, which is a crypto but, uh, private key. And this is going to fail. Let's do NDM project X crypto like this. What's going on? Project X. Okay. So we're going to say is validator. Uh, yeah. Which is a bool. And we're going to say if is validator is basically opts private key is not null. So if we give a private key, because if we are a validator, we need a private key. If you are just a node, that, uh, just a simple node, we don't need a private key because we are not going to sign. If we are a validator, we're going to sign the blocks. So we need to have a private key. And we say in our new server, we say simply, if we have a private key, we are a validator. If we are not a private key, we are no validator. Simple. And later on, of course, if you have proof of stake, you need to have some skin in the game, which basically means we need to check if this guy has coins enough or something. But that's later on. That's later on. Let's first do this. Okay, that's fine. The next thing we need to implement is some kind of a structure where we can maintain a list of transactions. And a lot of people already know this is going to be a mempool. And a mempool is nothing very special it's just a data it's, it's basically just a list a list of a dictionary or whatever that maintains a list of transactions and it's very important because each node if let's say if i send if i make it i'm a client and i make a transaction and i'm going to use uh, some kind of a node as api to post the transaction to the node if the node is a validator or not, it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make a difference. It will check that transaction if it's valid. It will add it to its mempool and it will broadcast that transaction to all other nodes. And all the other nodes will do the ex exact same thing. They will verify the transaction, they will add it to the mempool and they will broadcast this to, to their nodes. And so we create this chain this, 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 how do you call it? Like this butterfly effect where every single node will have that transaction sooner or later. But what happens if somebody, some, some little hacker with his red hat behind his desk and he says, okay, let's make one million of the same transactions and send it to a node. What we basically do is verifying one million transactions, the same transactions, and we got choked, we get DDoSed. And the network and every single, every single node will basically break and it's GG. We can, we can go home and call it a day. And that's what we don't want. So we need this mempool to basically maintain a list of transactions that are already on the chain and so on and so on. I hope this makes sense. So let's get to work. The question is, where am I going to place this pool? Um, I think I could do it in a uh, network, why not? Uh, takes pool package network. Uh, what the hell is going on? It's gonna be a struct. And we gonna, the reason why we don't add this functionality directly into the server is because we're gonna add some additional helper functions and I don't wanna be, uh, I wanna make it um, its own struct, its own type with its own functionality in it. So TX pool, it's gonna have transactions. I'm gonna make it private transactions, which is uh, map types, spent hash, core current transaction. Yeah. So we're gonna have a map 
with the hash of the transaction and its corresponding transaction. Yeah, then we're gonna say new tx pool. Uh, yeah, return this make wait transactions make. It's one of those days. Make a map type spent hash uh, core print transaction. Okay. And then I'm going to say ptx pool len int. We're going to return the length of. Um, Command the length of the transactions. We're gonna make the pool. Uh, we need some kind of a way to flesh this. Something is really wrong with this thing. I'm gonna buy this new mic because all these wires are. Peep and transactions is make. We're gonna actually reinstantiate this map. Can we reuse this? That's a question. Probably not. Um, make a map. This. And then. Tx pool. Add. And it's gonna be a tx, which is a fork and transaction. I'm gonna add an addosh. Um, we're gonna say so the main question we need to ask is are we going to verify it here or are we going to verify it in the server that's a good question let's think about it in the meanwhile so P uh, wait first we need to hash do we have some kind of a way to hash our transaction already we don't know we don't So we need to have something like tx. Um, transaction. This type spent hash. Uh, now maybe we should do the same thing as we did with block and make this a transaction hash search. But to be honest, it's just byte, so we could do something like um, types print hash sha sum tx print data. I think that's good enough. I'm gonna say. Uh, the x print hash and we need to have a way to basically check if the transaction is not already in there so we're gonna say has or rather has not hash um, the hash <laughs> this is confusing uh, type spent hash like this and it's gonna be a bool and we're gonna say okay is even transactions hash return okay so this function is gonna check if you already have the transaction and then we gonna do if even has hash <laughs> um, We're gonna do nothing. And otherwise, we're gonna add it. This uh, TX, like this. And call it a day. Yes. Um. I'm really thinking in the back of my head if we don't need to make this more abstract. Cause be, but the thing is, 
transaction only has data, which is just a byte, but what if we want to want to hash it differently? Maybe, I don't know, maybe some guy uh, says, yeah, but my data, the first byte of my data is the first four bytes, bits, bytes, is a magic number, and I don't want to include that number into my hash for some reason. They have no option to do that because the core business logic of hash is encapsulated in this thing. And I want to make it good. So let's open up um, hashes. Let's say type the x hashes structs, which is a um, at the x hasher, hasher is just the hasher, so you could say the x hasher hash uh, the x is a transaction types with hash return, and then we can say this do a hasher of type transaction. Yeah, well. And Visual Studio, hello. Return. Uh, maybe make it explicit, why not? Asher, hash, this. Okay. And now, and now in the X pool, we say the X hasher. I'm also worried to having circular dependencies. I'm not gonna lie. I think for now it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so we can hash a transaction. We check if the transaction uh, or mempool doesn't have a transaction. If we have, we just return null. There's no need to return an error because it's gonna be very frequently that we will uh, see the same transaction over and over again. And then we add this to our map. And that's fine. So let's do the expo test and go. Core, is this core? Oh, wait. Delete this thing, it should be a network. Test water, like, yes. Okay, Visual Studio Code is lagging, to be honest. Uh, punk, test. For now, let's give it just an arbitrary name. Uh, test the expool, why not? Something like that. Um, let's do assert equal. That's working. Um, now, do we already have something to instantiate or create transactions? Hash sign and verify, we don't. So we could say func new transaction and we should give it the data, which is a byte. Yeah. Transaction, I'm gonna say return transaction data, data, like this. We can expand that later on if we want. And we could do func test the x pool at x, something like this. We 
we say tx is a new transaction, is it core? Core of a new transaction. And we're going to give it uh, some arbitrary script, whatever you want to name it. And then we say assert nil t p print at tx and call it a day. Okay. Uh, let me think. So um, I'm really, really wondering if we should verify it in the mempool itself. Or not. Um, Say um, give me one. And then let's do something like uh, peep and flesh and assert this just to make sure everything is kind of like we want it to be. Uh, make test. Okay. Let's go back to server. So our server needs to have this thing. Uh, TX, let's call it mempool because people know this name. Um, it's going to be a TX pool. New TX pool. And to be honest, what, what you also could do is basically uh, pre-initialize this with a, some kind of a length. Um, so instead of creating a dynamic array, which should be, uh, we, we could predefine the length. So it has some predefined allocated memory for it. Uh, that could be a good option. I think that's up for future if you really want to. Um, I'm thinking what I should do. So basically if mempool we instantiate it, it's fine. So yeah, so what's gonna happen is each time, so l look at this, so we have our mempool, let's create this, let's create this variable, block time. Uh, the thing is, I'm not really sure what the block time is going to be. I really need to think this more in depth, but um, maybe there is no block time, who knows? Uh, I need to check and think um, how this is gonna be working. But we could say something like uh, just for now, um, because there need to be there need to be some kind of mechanism. So the server needs to know when he needs to uh, the valid if some if some server is elected as a validator, that guy needs to know when it's time to consume all of its mempool and put it into a block and commit this block and sign the block and make it actually a block and propose it to the network. Um, or, or you say, yeah, there is no block time and each new transaction make it a block, but I don't think it's very efficient. So we should have a block time. And that could, this block time could be dynamic because let's say you have a very uh, low congested network, like one transaction every hour. Does it make sense to have a block time of five seconds? No. But if you have a network that has... <laughs> like um, 1 million transactions in a second, yeah, then your block time should be basically none. Uh, what I mean, then uh, should be should be very, very, very low, uh, if that makes sense. So for now, we're going to say a block time is a time of iteration. And we say that uh, for now, uh, this could be actually an option, maybe. Why not? Uh, time duration. We're gonna say uh, BT is gonna be um, it's gonna be block time if BT uh, 
I, I'm thinking, what is Go doing with a, a non-initialized duration? Uh, BT is zero, is this something? Is this? Wait, I'm gonna test this. Uh, I, know, I don't know this at the top of my head. So uh, block time is gonna be, actually we don't need this in here because we have it in our thing. Okay, cool. Um, so what we're gonna do is, we have this ticker. If people remember from the first episode, we have this ticker, and that's exactly what we're gonna do, what we're gonna utilize for. So we're gonna say, uh, Aspen block time. And we don't need this, because we're gonna have it. But, uh, oh, that's a bad. So the thing is, you could basically uh, leave block time out and then you, the server will have access to its block time. But the thing is, because the server ops is embedded, it will it will have directly access to the server ops um, variables. But still, I think it would be more explicit if we um, put block time inside server because it could be that some guy uh, wants a default block time and if you don't pass in block time in server ops, you should fall back to the default block time, if, if that makes sense. And yeah, we should uh, do it like this then. Um, yeah, so basically Aspen block time. So this ticket will basically take every block time and then we're gonna, and here, uh, we're gonna say uh, creating a new block, but only, only, if this is a uh, validator. So we could say something like, um, is validator, we could say this. Yeah. And then we can say, for example, as server uh, create new block, Placeholder. This is just placeholders, okay? It's just uh, to make a point, to make, uh, also to, to stimulate my brain thinking on what's next. Um, and what's what's gonna happen in creating your block is that if it's a validator, then uh, it will check the mempool uh, and grab all the transactions and put it into a block and GG. Well, the thing is, don't get me wrong, if it's a validator, but it also needs to be elected, right? So because you cannot have, um, there's only one single source of truth, there's only one miner, so there should be only one validator, right? I know it sounds confusing, especially if you're not really, really in-depth into, in, into the parlance, so to say, um, but it makes sense. Uh, and like I said, if you have more questions, you always can DM me on uh, YouTube or whatever, on Twitter, and I will be very happy to go more in depth because um, like I said, it's very hard for me to think, uh, type and talk and all at the same time. That's for me, that's a new experience and I, I, I'm getting better at it. I, I can feel it, but still not the best. So, um, and it's getting complex. So I need to keep my head on to the, to the code. So, um, a little recap. We made a TX pool, a mempool. Yeah, okay, cool. And then we add a block time just for the meme. So we say if, if it's time, if it's time to block, then we say if, if we are a validator, we can create a new block, but we need to add some more functionality to see if it's actually this is consensus logic here. We need to call consensus logic, but we don't have consensus yet. So we just do 
it like that for now. So, okay, cool. So now we need to have a way to uh, handle transactions. And how are transactions coming into our chain? Well, there are basically two ways. First, there can be a client, for example, myself, I am making a wallet or I'm making an application, Web3, whatever, and I want to make a transaction. I can use uh, the transaction library that we are going to include into the project. We're going to build a transaction in code. Then we're going to encode it to bytes and then we're going to push or post that transaction to our API. We will receive our API, our HTTP API will receive that transaction. It will verify and do its thing, and it will then uh, put that into the mempool. So it will communicate with the server and the server will put it into the mempool, okay? Then the mempool will verify it again and it will um, broadcast that transaction to all of its peers. That's the first uh, way transactions can come in. The next way is basically, uh, the second part of the first part is where uh, we are just a node chilling, doing nothing. And uh, one of the other nodes where uh, that are connected to us, or basically uh, we are connected to them, they're gonna say, "Hey, yo, there is a new transaction. Uh, there is a new transaction coming in on my on my end, uh, and I need to broadcast it. Well, here it is. Please do do your thing with it." And that's uh, the second way transactions can come in. Uh, but they will need to be treated, both those ways will, will need to be treated as they were one. So that means that we can say, um, <coughs> whoa, excuse me, all this talking, man, whoa, yo, uh, func server, uh, we can say handle transaction, which is a tx score print transaction. And it will give an error. And we're going to say, I'm also going to add more comments uh, to these things because, because things are getting complicated and we need to make sure we, we remember what we are doing and what, 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 what things are, uh, what logic are meaning and such things. So we, um, handle transaction. Um, Yeah, so we're gonna say uh, the X can verify. So let's verify it here and say if it's not no, return the errors. And then as been mempool and add, maybe we can do this. The X. Then we need to double check in mempool in a pool to be honest. The X pool has okay, so we cannot okay cool. I, I don't I don't think this is I think we should check if our pool already has a transaction inside of this function. Or not. The X pool test. Um, so we add a transaction and we check if it's one, and then we're gonna say, yo, the XX is the same transaction. We need to assert that it's not happening. Well, we can because we are not notified that it does not exist. Uh, we, don't, we, we are not getting notified that this transaction already exists by the mempool, the X pool, whatever. Uh, you see, because basically if it has, we return nil. So we don't need to do this. So we can just say assert uh, equal T. Deep in the land one. Or not. Yeah, that's cool. So that's working. Um, 
so back to server I'm just gonna add it and call it a day um, because the reason why I'm uh, doing so complex about this simple thing is I want to lock so Let's just do it and I will explain what's concerning me. So I can say log resp and uh, log with, I think it's with fields, with fields, with info, and we can say uh, this um, new trans, new tx, wait, adding new tx to the mempool or something. No, 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 no. Oh man, I'm so I'm retarded. Adding new TX to the mempool. I'm telling the people, the users of this thing, hey, we are adding this TX to the mempool. And then we are calling aspen mempool.net. Problem is, it could be that it's not adding because it's already existing. So, that's why we could split this up and say, um, then, because I, I could also use the log res into, I, 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 I could also lock into uh, TX pool, but from a programming, from a design perspective, I don't like to add in those secondary, tertiary structures that basically, they have some functionality, but they are not really a core part of the application. I mean, they are a core part, but they are not, let's say I don't give them, I as a programmer, I don't give TX pool enough responsibility to lock inside of it, if that makes sense. Um, so I'm gonna do this, and uh, I'm gonna say at at uh, transaction to the pool. Caller. But wait, um, it's a fucking dict. <laughs> it's a fucking dict. So basically, it means that it doesn't really matter, to be honest. So, uh, but we're gonna do it anyway. So add adds the transaction. Uh, That adds a transaction to the pool. The caller is responsible. Uh, responsible. Checking if the TX already exists. Add a transaction to the pool. The caller is responsible. Responsible for the caller access. Because to be honest, we actually removed this thing, but look at this. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm. It will just work fine because we all have a dictionary, guys. We have a dictionary. All right, handle transaction. So we can basically perfectly check it here and say uh, if aspent mempool punt has. Uh, I'm gonna cache this real quick to be honest and I think I'm gonna swap back to Vim to be honest because this is uh, it's causing too much issues um, hash types with hash yeah and then um, if the x bent hash bent is zero, I'm gonna say the x bent hash is this thing. I'm gonna return 
Please don't hash. All right. So I, I, by doing this, I can call hash so much uh, as as much as I want without having any uh, impacts because we have a cached version, which is nice. Um, let's call it hash. It's gonna be takes and hash. Takes hash hash and then. Transaction already in um, oh. All right. Yes. So we get a transaction. We this is after this is after uh, decoding from bytes. We verify the transaction. We get the hash. We check if the mempool already has this thing. If it is, we log it and we return. Otherwise, we are creating a new transaction. Uh, we are adding a new transaction to the mempool. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's perfectly fine. And in test um, transaction, the explorer test. Oh my god, it's time to stop. That's for sure. Uh, the explorer test because um, I'm getting fright um, and choking. New core. Yes, yes, and yes. So that's good. All right. Um, of course, we don't uh, use this function, but that's no issues. We're all, all at fifty. So yeah, I think we're gonna wrap this up because um, the next episode we can continue this. So today we, uh, I, I mean, this episode we have uh, fixed our. Um, or thread issue with uh, our header length, our header slice list, whatever you want to name it, in our uh, blockchain structure. And then we swap back to our server where we um, added uh, private keys. We have an option to add a private key, so it's going to be a validator. We created a TX pool, which is actually a super simple dictionary um, that is embedded in our server. And each time there is a transaction, we will um, verify this thing, verify the transaction, grab its hash and um, put it into the mempool if it does not already is in there. And we just log this nicely onto our console, which will be um, very useful in the next episodes. So the next episode, we're gonna make sure that we're gonna test our server and then we're gonna basically gonna make some kind of I think we're gonna make um, some kind of a way to communicate with nodes um, or, or yeah yeah that's what we need to do or some kind of a way so we can uh, uh, pump transactions into this into the chain and, and see it creating blocks that would be nice that would be a major milestone yeah yeah that would be a major milestone and that's exactly what we're gonna do maybe we should already start doing the protocol um, so we can sync maybe or or broadcasting i don't know um that should be something for the future uh, for for next episode to decide see how far we go uh again uh, people if you like what you see and you see what you like please give a thumbs up on youtube it really helps me uh subscribe to the channel it's free i don't do any kind of uh, ads it's just you can you can watch the whole episode without having a blink to some kind of a toothpaste uh, commercial or whatever um, yes yeah, just subscribe uh, would help me thanks for watching everybody and uh, see you in the next one ciao